What is up here is this is Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, I left you guys with quite the cl cliffhanger. We had a couple deaths, Luna and Alice, which was incredibly shocking, and then we had to vote. We really had to decide whether or not we trusted K or not, and we chose to trust K. Let's see if K betrayed us. Please direct your attention to the results screen. Moment of truth, guys. Let's see how it went. Wow. Come on. What? K, are you kidding me? So let's take a second to analyze this. Phi and Dio both chose Betray. Or chose Betray as a pair. I'm not incredibly surprised by that. Clover also chose Betray. I'm not really too surprised by that. She seemed more inclined to click Betray. Both of those players, you know, the Phi Dio pair and Clover, I would say, lean towards Betray. So if I were playing one of them, I myself would lean further towards Betray. So I'm not too surprised by that. Quark and Tenmyoji chose to Betray? Wow. So this is a pretty phenomenal response that I didn't even consider. We have no idea where Quark is, but Quark has six points, right? And so Temyoji, as a pair, knowing that Luna is dead and Luna is automatically going to ally, they choose Betray. I guess, for what it's worth, you can do that pretty, uh, you know, scot-free. Luna's already dead, so it's not like losing points is going to kill her anymore. So Quark also has nine points, which I had never even really considered. How is that dynamic going to play out? And then, of course, myself and Alice, we chose to ally and, of course, are betrayed by K because we can never feel good about any decision we make. That's the rule of Zero Escape games. We can never feel good about a decision we make. <laughs> of course, K betrays us. <sighs> See how it goes. Points have been assigned or subtracted accordingly. Please check your bracelet to see your updated bracelet points. What? So you did indeed choose ally. Y you tricked me. I apologize. Sigma. You idiot. Now K's got nine points thanks to your stupid... Not a baka. <laughs> but he's not going to just leave us. I apologize for taking further advantage of your trust, but I will be leaving. What? Kay's just pulling out all the stops. He's been so likable and so amenable up until this point, but now... What? Before we could react, Kay slipped past us with speed and agility that belied his size. The blink of an eye, he was standing in front of the number nine door. K! K! Darn it. Wait! He didn't give any sign that he'd heard Dio, just grabbed the lever and pulled it down. Oh wow! So no no even attempt to stop K, K just immediately opens the door. He's just that fast. Oh no! What? Why? Well, so this is quite the turn. Um, I really did not expect this from K. Of course I'm getting taken advantage of for choosing ally, because, you know, the game won't let me do that. The only time the game let me get away with choosing ally was with Luna, which is not surprising, I guess. But... I'm really curious what's going on in Kay's head right now. I wonder if Kay did remember, well, their memories, right? If their memories came back and they realized what they needed to get to the outside world for. And that's why they're so adamant about getting out there now. Up until this point, Kay seemed very friendly and at the very least invested in figuring out the situation at large. And that's what we got Phi, or that's how we got Phi to come back to the game, right? Is to say, hey, even if you leave, we haven't really resolved anything, right? And it doesn't seem that that's really an opportunity with K. But anyways, now we also have the chance to see what happens when the number nine door opens. And, well, let's see. 
It will remain open for nine seconds. Why did you do it? I trusted you, Kay. The answer is obvious. Two, excuse me, three people have already been murdered. If I remain, I place myself in greater danger. A simple decision, really. I'm sure you would have done. Darn it, Kay! I apologize. I do intend to contact the police as soon as I have escaped. Now then. Kay! Wait! He didn't even turn around. And it's shut. Just like that. The number nine door has closed. So now, we obviously need to take this information into account going forward. We can't really get K get to nine points. However, when you examine why he or she chose to exit the door at this moment in time, you have to wonder, is it because K got nine points? Or is it because of all the murders in this timeline? For example, in one of our first timelines, if K were to have gotten nine points, would they have stayed around had they not felt like their life was so imminently in threat? And I don't... I don't really know. This ends the Nonary game, so this is obviously going to be a game over ending, right? Thank you for your participation. As the game is over, all doors other than the number 9 door have been unlocked. Interesting. So, even though technically the Nonary game is over, and this is a probable game over route, I'm wondering if we'll have the chance to do some exploration that could further inform the other timelines. Escape is not possible. Please enjoy your stay. Yikes. And what's also sad is we don't even know where Quark is, but Quark had nine points too. Quark could have walked through the door. He's gone. Darn it. This is all your fault, Sigma. There's no point to blaming him now. Yeah. It's not like we can open that door again. Darn it. I'm really... I'm curious. The, the music is very interesting. Are we going to get some crazy insight at this moment? Is this timeline really continuing? No, this isn't right. This can't be right. We stood there in silence, staring at the door. The only exit to the outside world now closed forever. Our only chance of escape now was to hope Kay would keep his word and contact the police. Should the police even exist in this outside world, right? Alice, Luna, the old woman, who had killed them? And where had Quark gone? There were questions we still hadn't answered, but we had plenty of time now. Perhaps we still would. And here comes the game over screen. Yeah, game over. Ah, oh, man, I thought we'd have the chance to look around and at least find out where Quark was. Who is that lady? Right? Like, why? Why is she here? Also, shout out to making our way to the 28th save file. It's pretty funny. All right, well, we'll return. Interesting. So here's a take. We can take a look at the timeline here. So we chose this route at first. And then we chose the blue door, and that led us to go to the rec room, and in the AB game, we chose to ally. Oh, actually, I want to see if there's anything else we unlocked on this other end. It looks like there is. How do we stop Phi lock number eight? We unlock this. Oh, wait, no, no, but we just didn't. <laughs> Infirmary who planted the bomb, but we don't have this one. That's right. Okay, so that's not as exciting as I had expected. So we haven't found any information that unlocks other pathways 
yet. Huh. All right, well, let's go back and see what happens if we choose to betray K, because it seems like that's a pretty fruitful timeline. Here we go. Wow, K really betrayed us. I can understand it, you know? It's not like it's completely unreasonable, but it is just... It is a bit surprising because, you know, staying with the sake, for the sake of ally and just making such a compelling argument in with seemingly genuine, uh, you know, plea to choose ally. I don't know. Anyways. So here we go. We're going to choose skip all the way up until we get to uh, ally versus betray. Let's pick betray. I wonder which timeline Phi was initially concerned about on this end. I really am. So let's see what happens here. Let's see if, uh, let's say, I, I would bet that K chooses ally in this timeline because you guys know that's just how this game works, right? So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm, I'm curious. Let's see if these are different too. So they chose Betray again. Betray ally again. Betray. Betray! So K chooses Betray either way. For the first time in a long time, the game's not just, you know, hitting us in the gut over and over and making us feel bad. It's actually rewarding us here, saying that, well, K is going to Betray no matter what, so our information that we gained from our other timeline is actually useful. And choosing Betray is going to save us here. The real question is, where is Quark? Quark has nine points and can walk through the nine door at any given time. How do you manage the group dynamic from this point forward? If you don't know where Quark is, but Quark has nine points, the pair or the bracelet is going to update. So Quark, if conscious, is going to recognize that he has nine points and could try to go through the nine door at any given time. Very interesting. Do you have somebody guard the nine door? I don't know. So you picked Betray. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see what Kay has to say for himself now. Leading to a draw, it would seem. You don't feel bad about it or anything? I could ask the same of you. Okay, yeah, I guess that's fair. I had thought that you would choose Ally. If I had, then you'd have 9 BP right now, wouldn't you? Nice try, but I'm not going to let you get out of here that easily. As I told you before, even if I were to reach 9 BP, I would not necessarily leave immediately. Huh, is that so? Okay. I might choose to wait until everyone else had also reached 9 BP. Yeah, well, I considered that. Didn't seem likely. Then you do not trust me. Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore, okay? Well, I need to apologize. Trust must be earned in a game like this. Says the guy who told me to trust him so he could betray me. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, you've lost all potential, you know, trust from my end. Indeed, clearly I don't deserve to be trusted. The honesty is refreshing, but that's really not the brightest move. <laughs> so you choose be chose Betray too, huh? If you just picked Ally, I'd have 9 BP right now. Why on earth would I have done that? There's no way Clover would have chosen Ally when you had a chance to betray her and get to 9 BP. Are you an idiot or something? <laughs> Bunch of bakas. So you chose betray? Of course. Luna, Luna's bracelet is already off. No risk of a penalty for her now. 
that brings Quark's BP up to none. Are you worried that he might try and get out? Well, if he were to do so, the rest of us would be trapped here. It is interesting, actually. Let's think about Temyoji's perspective. Temyoji must trust Quark enough that choosing Betray to get Quark to 9 points is not a concern. Temyoji very easily could have chosen Ally, gained 2 points for himself, and gained 2 points for Quark, meaning he would not have to worry about Quark leaving Temyoji in the dust, right? With 9 points. So, from Temyoji's perspective, to, to trust Quark enough to choose Betray to put himself at risk, to let Quark potentially sneak out and doom Temyoji, says a lot about the relationship. <laughs> Bet you're all pretty happy he isn't here right now, aren't you? Whoa, whoa, nobody's saying that. Maybe you aren't saying it, but I know what you're thinking. Alright. And so the search for Quark continues. Everybody's going to be a little bit more motivated this time around. The Ambidex gates have closed. Round 3 of the Ambidex game will be the star round. Okay, we've pretty much heard this part. As many times as we want, huh? And that means we can play the AB game over and over using these star keys, right? So it would seem. Alright, well, where do we find them? Beyond the next set of chromatic doors. Oh. You found them already? Yeah, that's right. I forgot to tell you guys. Take a look at the map. There are three white doors in the Floor B warehouse. White doors, huh? Maybe that's where Quark went. The warehouse on Floor B, you said? Yeah, but you're not going to be able to get through them until they open. We've still got more than 80 minutes until that happens. Darn. We will need to form groups of colors that can make white. Time we had a look at all our colors then. Yeah. Well, looks like they've been shuffled around again. Looks like I'm a... Blue Solo. Oh, interesting. Have we been a solo before? I don't think so. I'm a magenta pear. As am I. <laughs> so K, K and Phi are a pair. We know that that pair is choosing Betray like no matter what. You and me, huh? Better than Dio, I guess. <laughs> That's a pretty low bar, though. You say something? What color are you? I'm a green solo. That's a Betray vote. <laughs> What's with the size? Forget about it. What about you two? Cyan, pear. I'm a cyan pear too. Okay, Clover and Temyoji, I, I like that pairing. They'll finally have the chance to, you know, partner up. Alice and Luna's bracelets have changed as well. Are they both- oh my goodness, both of the dead characters <laughs> are paired together. Both of them are yellow pairs. So this is really interesting to consider because now we know that this pair, no matter what, is going to vote ally. So we need to be incredibly careful who we pair with, well, the yellow color for the white chromatic doors because whoever is partnering with them is going to get a free three points. Then, what color is Quark? He's a red solo. In order to open the white doors, you normally need, say, red, blue, and green. And this is why Phi Psy, right? Because Phi is going to be paired with Dio. Phi and K and Dio. What a devious trio. 
And then, let's see, who are we gonna be paired with? Or, oh, we're gonna be paired with the <laughs> figures. <laughs> Thanks, you. Thank you so much, uh, Virtue's Last Reward. We are gonna be paired with the dead couple, <laughs> Luna and Alice. <laughs> so we're getting the free ally and we'll need to decide how we vote. It also means when we go through that chromatic door, we're literally the only one investigating, which is gonna be a pretty lonely experience. And then that leaves who? Quark with um, Cyan, which is gonna be Temyoji and Clover. But solos can't group together, right? Can we skip this? No, we can't. Okay. So magenta is a mix of red and blue, yellow is a mix of red and green, cyan is a mix of blue and green. So if you combine magenta with green, you get white, and so on. I see. Okay then. We just need to get to the floor B warehouse when the door is open, right? And you need to find Quark, right? I'll be taken off then. Where do you think you're going? Anywhere that isn't here. Yeah, we still haven't really followed up on the whole Neo Stigma thing, the Stigmine thing, have we? Hanging out with a murderer doesn't sound like a good time to me. However, I would actually... Well, not, not directly to that statement. I would say hanging out with the rest of the group, even if a murderer is in that group, is better than going off alone when you're in a warehouse filled with a potential murderer, right? The guy who insists on splitting up is usually the first to bite it. What? Then again, loners often turn out to be killers. <laughs> Just, what are you getting at, old man? You think I killed them? Maybe, maybe not, but you're pretty darn suspicious. Ain't that the truth? Dio sus. It's always red. <laughs> you're trying to start something, you regular old piece of... Hey, knock it off. We don't actually know one of us is the killer, do we? We have no evidence of that, no. But we do know that Zero Senior is one of us. I'm also curious, have we found a bomb in this timeline? I don't think we have. And there's an excellent chance that Zero Senior and the killer are one and the same. Then why did he kill Alice and Luna now? If Zero Senior wanted any of us dead, he could have done it way before this. While we were, I don't know, unconscious, for instance? What's the point of setting up this whole game just to kill off two of your participants halfway through? I mean, clearly Zero is interested in the dynamic of the group, and something much larger than just trying to kill the individual participants. Then are you saying there's another person in here somewhere? Possibly. I mean, you might say there are only nine participants, but there was an, some random lady who showed up dead. That we have no idea who she is, where she came from, etc. It's means it's far, you know, from the realm of impossible for there to be somebody else we've never encountered or have any idea who they are. It's possible. I think it might be a good idea for us to all look for the killer. Together? Well, we gain nothing by standing around here. Yeah. I've got to find Quark, and soon. If we're going to search, we should go in pairs this time. How are we going to pair up, then? I'm not going with K. If he feel if he decides he feels like snapping me in half, there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I'll go with anyone besides Dio. I feel you on that, Clover. I don't want to go with Dio either. <laughs> I love this so much. Fi's just like broken down. Is like I see where this is going. Fine. He's hardly my first choice, but I'll take Dio. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to be with him, but I can put up with him. And more importantly, I think Fi is analytical and intelligent enough to to really, I guess, gain some insight into Dio. I think if I had anybody that I wanted to watch Dio 
and potentially learn about his thought process and his behaviors, etc. Uh, make sure he's not doing anything suspicious. I would probably want that person to be fi. What the heck? Just figure that this way we don't have to make this into a huge argument. Besides, I'm going to be stuck with you once we go through the chromatic doors anyway. No reason to put it off. I will go with Sigma. Really? Interesting. <laughs> are we going to are you gonna to try to earn my trust again or what? Oh yeah? Would you prefer someone else? No, I guess you're okay. That leaves me and Clover as a pair then. You could justify it in that they're probably, or they are certainly going to be working together in the next chromatic door. Anyways, and we know that Temyoji is trying to gain Clover's trust. Granted, that was something he said primarily in a different timeline. Uh, it doesn't mean it's not at all present here. Yep. Looks like we're all set. We'll take the cyan door on floor A and the blue door on floor B. Alright, Clover and I will take the magenta door and the red door. That leaves us with the yellow and green doors then. Once we're all done, let's meet in the floor B warehouse, alright. Sounds like a plan, Sigma. Got it. See you later then. So let's see what we find, if anything. Is this where a bomb is going to be discovered finally? We're going into the infirmary. We haven't been there this timeline yet, have we? I don't think we'll find much. If anything, we'll just have some alone time with Kay. There's no one in the infirmary. No quark and no killer, at least as far as I can see. Well, there is someone here. Technically, at least. Okay, Kay. The old woman. Oh, yeah. She was lying silently on the bed furthest away from us. If it weren't for the bloodstains on her chest and arm, her peaceful expression would have fooled most people into thinking she was just asleep. The blood had dried and darkened and now looked like any other stain. That was when I noticed it. Huh? Whoa! So that's a pretty big deal. She had a bracelet! What? She had a bracelet. What bracelet? Does somebody have the bracelet on them? If so, who? Wait a minute. Look at her wrist. It seems remarkably clean. Yeah, for some reason there's no blood on this part. Maybe she had something on her wrist. A watch, perhaps. A watch? Yes. <laughs> Sigma's like, are you for real, Kay? It was likely removed after she was killed. That would account for the lack of blood spatter on her wrist. The real question is, what type of, I don't know, bracelet would be useful in this Nonary game? I know that in the previous one, in 999, there was, I actually forget what it is, maybe the Zero Bracelet or something, that proved to be incredibly useful, but this bracelet would have to be colored in some manner, and I think that limits, to an extent, what could be done with it. Is there any bracelet that would allow for access to multiple places? I don't really know. And You need to go through a door with one other person, or one other entity, right? A pair or a person. And so it's not like you can do that secretly, right? Unless you have their bracelet after they're dead. So I'm not really sure how that would work. All I can think of is that this body is literally from a different timeline. That this is a Zero Escape, a Virtue's Last Reward character from one of our other timelines. And that would narrow it down to Luna, Clover, Alice, maybe unlikely. I would bet on Luna. I would bet on future Luna. A watch, huh? 
I don't know. It just looks like it was kind of wide for a watch. Aren't women's watches usually thinner? You raise a good point. Perhaps it was some kind of jewelry? Jewelry? Sigma's like, are you for real, Kay? You're not gonna think of the thing that all of us in this Nonary game have on their wrist have on our wrists? You mean like a bracelet or some Of course. Why didn't I see it sooner? This is the same size and shape as our bracelets. Look, look, it's exactly the same width. Oh, you know what? I can't even believe I didn't think of this. See, it's so tempting to see this elderly woman and think, that's gotta be Luna or it's gotta be, you know, Clover from a different timeline or whatever. But there's also one character that we've met who we don't know what they look like. And furthermore, they don't know what they look like because they've lost their memories, presumably. And that would be Kay. For all we know, we could be looking at K from another timeline without all of the robotic armor and, and masks and such, too. That would be interesting. Granted, the wrist watch or the, the bracelet was on the outside of the armor, so I actually think that decreases that likelihood, but I want, definitely want to keep that possibility in the back of my mind. I never even realized that this person we've never seen before but is a part of the Nonary game could be the one person we know is in the Nonary game who we don't actually know their appearance, and that's Kay. Then that would mean... She was wearing a bracelet when she was killed. She was a participant, just like us. Are you sure? This old woman, a player in the Nonary game? Okay? Is something wrong? Oh. No, nothing. If you're correct, then where did the thief hide this stolen bracelet? Yeah, and what use, right, did the thief get out of it? And we still don't really know how the woman was put in the AB room, but... We were quite thorough during our earlier search. I mean, unless they have it on their personnel. But I know that I saw nothing. And none of the others reported finding a bracelet either. And that means they've been holding on to it this whole time. They've probably still got it. That would seem likely. No, wait. If they'd been carrying it around, the sensors in the chromatic doors would have picked it up. That's true, they wouldn't be able to walk through with another person. Huh. Without the right combination of bracelets, the secondary door would never have opened. So they couldn't have had it on their personnel at the time of walking through those doors. So our suspect is not only a killer and a thief, but a skilled imposter as well. What are you saying? After killing the old woman, they put on her bracelet. In fact, it is entirely possible they are wearing it still. But then who was this person in the first place? Did they just wake up here as a Nonary game participant but without a bracelet? Just to kind of spice things up a little? Yes, that would make sense. So the killer's running around with the old woman's bracelet. Yeah. Yes. Well, I, I guess I'm wondering about the mechanics of the bracelet. If somebody else were to put that bracelet on, would it assume its usual rules, regulations, etc., you know, tighten, and I guess whoever put it on, would they become an official participant in the nonary game, subject to all the same rules and potential punishments for breaking them? If so, why would somebody do that, right? Why would somebody become a Nonary Game participant at the expense of this person's life? What motivation would you need to do something so radical? And you're telling me they're probably wearing it? Correct. Do you remember what Zero Junior told us? 
そのようなことを言っていたかと思います。Something about how the bracelet will come off if the wearer's heart stops, I don't really call, I don't really call the exact words. ですから犯人は、ローバーを殺害後、自動的に外れたそのバングルを拾い上げ、自らの手首に。But in any event, once the old woman had died, her bracelet would have detached, allowing the killer to easily collect it. Why? ノナリーゲームに参加するためではないでしょうか So that they could participate in the nonary game, I imagine. What? Motomo to Hani. Kono game no Sanka Shato Ste Yote Sarate Ta Jim Butsteva, Nakata no Kamsimase. I suspect the killer was someone who was not originally intended to be a participant. Some Jim Butsna, Nanaka no Ryukara, Dostemo game in Sanka Shinakreva Naranata. For whatever reason, however, they were willing to go to great lengths to ensure that they were. I don't really understand what kind of a motivation that would be. However, the only thing I can think of is that they must have an idea of how, or they, they might, not must, they might have an idea of how the nonary game progresses and would then come back to try to change its course. And if that's the case, that brings it down to Sigma and Phi to an extent, right? Because they're the only two that we can confirm. Are experiencing this sort of timeline consciousness、uh, or parallel universe timeline phenomenon. Hmm. I don't know. How, how could they ensure that they were even in the warehouse at the time the Nonary game started if they weren't intended to be a participant? That's one of the barriers I'm trying to get through. So, what is it? プレイヤーのうちの一人であるローバーを殺害し、彼女に成り代わることにしたのか。To that end, they killed the old woman, who was one of the original participants, and took her place. Furthermore, the person who's doing this, if they were going back to and motivated to try to change how events take place, their motivation must not be for themselves, right? Because they're certainly more likely to have a better outcome if they don't participate in an owner game as opposed to if they do. And so, if they were to go back, they would almost want to change the outcome of the Nonary game for the sake of somebody else or some other people, right? Which means that they're probably somebody with a relationship to another Nonary game participant. And that makes me lean towards, you know, Temyoji, Quark, right? The other thing is, there are some people we don't really know. What the relationship is. So, for example, Phi and Sigma might know each other from you know, a previous、uh, encounter or something. We know Alice and Clover have somewhat of a relationship. And I wouldn't be surprised if K a y and Dio, for example, had a relationship as well. I'm really curious. But why would someone do that? That. I have no idea. Certainly, they must have a goal of some sort. You would have to be mad to choose to come here. But as to what that goal is and how the killer intends to achieve it, I'm afraid I do not have even speculation. Hmm. That's interesting. Have you noticed something? Well, there's blood all over the old lady's arm, except for right here. Since that's where the bracelet was, then the bracelet the killer stole should have blood on it. Yeah, so it had to have been cleaned. This one. Right. But none of us are wearing a bloody bracelet. Sigma, please tell me you're kidding. Well, I, I think Sigma's gonna be going, maybe if we got a particular light, we could detect blood even if it's been washed off. The killer would have, of course, wiped the blood off. <laughs> Only a fool would walk around with a bracelet covered in blood. So you're saying they cleaned it? Yes. Hmm. Have you discovered something? Well, yeah, what did they use to clean it, right? Okay. I know how we can identify the killer. Oh? That's right, the luminol spray. We just need some of that luminol. It doesn't matter how well they cleaned it, there should be some traces of blood left. Aha,、uh -huh, I see. That could very well work. 
皆さん、ご楽室に集まっていただくことにしましょう。We should have everyone gather in the rec room then. ルミノール主役があったのはあの部屋ですから。That is where the luminol was, I believe. Yeah. First, we need to finish looking for Quark, though. We've still got the infirmary and everything beyond the green door. Once we're done with that, we can head back to floor B to meet up with everyone else. Understood. Shall we go then? I wonder how they're going to approach it, too. Are they going to be a little bit more covert about it, right? And say, hey, there was something we wanted to show you from the rec room. Bring everybody there and then say, all right, everybody wrists out. <laughs> we got some luminol spray. Interesting. Wow. So that was incredibly fruitful, a lot more fruitful than I expected. And now I'm really curious. The game makes it seem like we're going to find out who this person is, right? We're actually going to discover who the killer is in this particular situation. And that could be incredibly value inf valuable information for all of our other timelines. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very excited to find out who this person is. Like I said, I don't really have the ability to narrow it down very specifically.、Um, if I had to guess, I would guess Phi, but I don't really know, to be honest. Phi, maybe. I don't really have a lot to go off of, but there's three doors here, too. The same as what we found on the other side of the blue door. But. It looks like two of them are already unlocked. So it does. The center and rightmost doors both say open. Perhaps the layout here is different. Hmm. Whatever. I'm. Yeah, that is pretty odd that they're both open, right?、Uh, this is something we haven't really talked about before. Because in all the other timelines, we've been under the presumption that. Well, once you solve a room, you can go through that door and it's unlocked. But every time we've actually been in this position prior to entering one of those rooms, only one of the doors is actually a possibility. The other two doors are locked. But what this potentially confirms is I don't know if it's just this timeline or if it's other timelines too, but the rooms that are not, I guess, specified, right? Like the treatment center in this case,、um, we know that there are two other rooms that from other timelines. What, what door do we go through? The green door? Right? So one of these should be the garden. And I don't remember what the other one would be, but even if somebody doesn't explore those rooms, it is possible for other people to access them, which could be really important, actually. And so Sigma's just kind of brushing it off as whatever, but I think, I think that's actually pretty important. Let's take the door on the right first. What? Gollum Bay? Yeah, we've definitely never experienced this place. Excuse me? What is this? Are we about to get trapped in here? Nobody's explored this, presumably. Why are all of the doors unlocked now? I have a lot of questions. Like, a lot of questions. We still haven't even covered Dio and the Neo Stigmine. We have the Luminol spray with the potential killer. And now we have this random Gollum Bay place we haven't been to before that I'm really curious to explore. And I'm also wondering if we're going to get trapped in here with Kay. I wouldn't be surprised. But、um, we're going to answer or start to get closer to answering those questions in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was. Very interesting to see how K a y acted in this AB game. I guess I was just too naive in trusting him. But,、um, yeah, we have far more things to worry about now、uh, than just K a y betraying us in the AB game. So, I'm looking forward to figuring out what those are. But until the next episode, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.